Good evening, everyone. My name is Robin Craig, and I am excited to see you this evening. I'm broadcasting from my hometown, where I still live in Houston, Texas, and I know that most everybody who's watching the show is on Facebook, and all of us are just talking up a storm throughout the week, and so many people are hurting and suffering and, you know, just feeling sad, and all of us have walked down that terrible journey of losing the people that we love and trying to find our way again and it's really difficult when we've been knocked down so far to claw our way back up to the top and figure out how to have a great life but that's what we are talking about tonight living life to the fullest and we'll be talking about that in just moments but first it's time for the critter update now I know this is everybody's favorite favorite segment of the show and it's one that I'm still kind of shocked that I'm still doing it because I've been catching critters for what seems like a thousand years to date I have trapped eight possums four raccoons and one poor cat who was in the wrong place at the wrong time just the way it goes but it's been so empowering for me to be able to do that because I've always run a hundred miles an hour from any kind of a tiny insect including a worm and they don't move very fast and they don't hop but it's been really empowering for me and I've been having issues I heard another sound up in the attic just the other day it didn't last for very long so maybe it was one of the um, older guys that came back to look for his friends and they weren't here so he left and I was happy about about that but I keep thinking Ellen DeGeneres needs to get that phone call and she needs to be told that I need her help possum proofing my home now everybody knows that I met Ellen at the 2008 Emmys we both won that year it was so exciting I have three Ellen has 32 Emmys isn't that glorious I just love her so much and she is such a sweetheart and she helps so many people so somebody needs to make that phone call and say honey you need to get your possum proofing skills down to Texas and help Robin Craig get her house together and don't worry I'll still find a way to do the critter update because I know it is your favorite now I'm excited that I have a YouTube channel now so if you guys are not able to be with us every week you can go to YouTube and just type in Robin Craig's channel C-R-A-I-G apostrophe S and you can subscribe to it so you get a little email every time I post a new show and that way you never have to miss all the excitement now speaking of excitement next week on Tuesday is Valentine's Day and that's that dreaded day where we're just like oh my lover's gone I cannot walk in any store without just seeing a million items that remind me that I'm widowed and so none of us really like that but I've changed my attitude because I'm a widow in a couple of days uh, well actually a couple more days maybe a week and a half I will be a widow of six and a half years and I've grown really weary of sitting home crying and feeling alone and pitiful on the holidays and the special occasions. So I seek now to find new ways to celebrate and have fun. I totally accept that my husband's gone. I miss him terribly. I miss all the wonderful things and all the great celebrations, but we can still celebrate in our own way. And when you tune into the show, if you're a little bit down, just wear your pajamas, get your laptop, watch the show in bed, and you'll be able to enjoy it in a different kind of way. So what has touched me, I put the word out on Facebook that I was looking for people to donate things that I could give away on the show. Because when you win anything, there's just something that's so fun and so exciting, and I just want to make people smile and feel happy. So I was elated when I put the word out yesterday that I want to give flowers. I'm giving away a lot of cool stuff, and I'm going to name some of those things, but I wanted to give flowers. My husband was a big flower giver, and I'm missing not getting the flowers. He grew them. He bought them. I just was always having fresh flowers in the house. So on Facebook, I said, if you would like to donate some flowers to a lucky winner, let me know. Well, four people stepped up to the plate, and they're all widows. Widows helping widows, to me, is just the most beautiful thing in the world. And you know what's really special about that? 
all of the people who are donating are in different countries. America, Africa, Great Britain, and Germany. Isn't that like the coolest, coolest thing? It was just so heartwarming for me to think that people are watching the show around the world and wanting to give back. So if you're watching the show and if you're one of those who wants to give back and you're not sure what to do, you can make a donation via PayPal on my website and I'll get something and donate it for you. Just go to my website, Robin Craig Direct dot com and whatever amount of money you have I will find something and I will get it and we'll make sure that whoever the winner of it is receives it so I love that idea and I got that idea from the gal in Great Britain I thought she was so cool her name was Linda and she just took that upon herself when she wanted to help and she figured that out and then somebody else followed isn't that the neatest thing so if you guys want to donate it's not too late just Facebook me or you can also email me uh, on my website on the contact page. Now to give you an idea of some of the things that are being given away, Nyla is adorable. She's in the chat room right now. And Paint It Forward, yes I see you guys talking about that. It is a classic case of Paint It Forward. I absolutely love that. And um, Oh, I see Frida. Hi, sweetie. I'm glad that you joined us, too. Everybody is here in the chat room. It's so delighting uh, to me. And Diane, Diane France Goodman, you're new to the show, too. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I'm just so honored and delighted when you guys come. And there are so many wonderful people to make friends with in the chat room. Everybody that I see in the chat room, I think, is, is widowed. So it's a beautiful thing. And Terry, he's really got it going on because he's the only widower who is with us right at this moment. So, honey, you're a smart one. You know right where to go to find the girls, don't you? Uh-huh. Well, let me tell you some of the Valentine's items I'm going to give away. Um, I've got some books, some different books, Starbucks cards, a Hope Matters t-shirt, of course, the flowers, some restaurant gift cards. Nyla is so cute. She's given a manicure to a widow and a haircut and a shave to a widower. So you guys got to make sure you tell all your friends to watch the show so that they can win. Um, I have an entrepreneur friend who is giving away his book and a consultation. If you're in the Houston area, he will do it in person. And if not, it'll be a great phone call. He's super smart. And of course, I'm giving away Benitos. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give away some of those tonight. Now, if you haven't seen the show, you need to know about Benitos because they are corn-free. They're chips, of course, and they're made from black beans, and they're corn-free, gluten-free, high fiber, no potatoes, low glycemic, no trans fats. They have protein and omegas in them. I mean, they're so tasty, and they're good for you. And the fact that they're low glycemic, we all know that regulating your blood sugar is the key to not being diabetic, or if you are diabetic, it's important to work at regulating your blood sugar. And these are the chips that can do it. So I'm going to give away a case of these tonight. So stick around for that a little bit later. Last week, the cutest thing happened. I love that people are so generous on the show. Terry in the chat room had won a case of Benitos, but the week before, he won a book. I had Carol Scabelli, one of my favorite people. She's written a book called Poor Widow Me. She was on the show. Terry won the book, and he felt kind of guilty, which he didn't have to, but he felt a little bit guilty because he won two weeks in a row. So bless his heart, he gave his chips to Nyla. Nyla, I know you're eating them away. She said she absolutely loves them. She took a picture posted them on my site, and um, it was just such a really fun, cool, sweet thing to do. So stick around because I'm going to give away some more of the Benitos tonight. Um, now let's get into the topic. What do we do? What do we do when we have been knocked down so far and we feel like the rug has been pulled out from under us? Our life as we saw it, our future as we saw it, they're just gone. You know, you lose your spouse. A lot of people, you know, I never want to discount people who have lost a significant other. I don't want to ever discount people who were engaged. You know, when you are with someone and you feel like that's the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with, 
and then they're gone and the rug is just pulled out from under you, it's a really hard place to be and it's real easy to just sit back and say life sucks and who cares and it's just not worth the effort, we're all going to die. And I think most of us have had moments where we have felt that way. But at the end of the day, we cannot sit around moping. We can't sit around crying. I mean, we still cry. I've been really emotional the last couple of weeks. I've been really touched by a number of things that you guys are doing. And you all know how hard I work on this show. I am in my third year of production. And I literally work 12-hour days yesterday. And I hate to say this because Nyla told me to go to bed. I worked for 17 hours yesterday. <laughs> this is so funny. I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting a text from my good friend Jeff Lanes and he says, Peekaboo, I'm watching you. Isn't that cute? Jeffrey, honey, it's just great to see you, baby. I hope you're doing well. I saw Jeff the other day and his back was hurting. So honey, I hope you're feeling better. Thank you for joining us. It's a beautiful thing. And you know, Jeffrey, if you want to join the chat room, you no longer have to have a stickem.com account. It's set up where you can log in with Twitter, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, whatever your other sites are. So if you're in the mood, jump in there and chat with all the gals. Now let's see. Melanie is saying, oh my gosh, Sandy's here. Hi, honey. We've been missing you tremendously. Sandy is saying that the first year is such a fog and such a shock. Nyla said my head was on the other side of the room and my body elsewhere. Yes, we just feel so discombobulated and it's so hard to get yourself together. But Melanie says that she's gone hiking and just to get into nature and to get away from people. And that's great because that's one of my tips, getting into nature. You know, we stay inside and we're crying and we're pitiful and we look bad and our eyes are puffy and we just don't want to expose ourselves to people. But if you can get out in nature, it's so soothing and it's so healing and to smell fresh air and to listen to the sound of leaves blowing in the wind and trying to identify the sounds of the different insects. It's a beautiful thing. So honey, I'm so glad to see that you are already doing that. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Excellent, excellent thing. So, um, okay, so let's see what else is going on here. And Sandy is giving some kudos to Soaring Spirits, absolutely. Her friends at church, the Widow Sisters, and everyone from Camp Widow, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of us have been saying lately that we miss just being around each other. Because when you're around people that have not walked this path, they don't get it. We know they don't get it. It's just... We can't be mad at them because when you're there and you've been widowed, you understand that you didn't get it either. And I'm sure I've probably said goofy stuff and I'm sure I've ignored people that needed help and all kinds of things. But once we've walked the path, we realize how difficult it is and we have to struggle to make things better. And by doing that, we feel better and those around us feel better. Isn't it funny that I'm getting all these texts? Okay, it's Jeff again. Okay, so Jeff might join the chat room later, but he is just kind of listening while working on his Mac. Okay, that's so great. Thank you, honey, for checking in. That is so cute and sweet, isn't it? <laughs> I love, love, love that. Okay, all right. Now, one of the things that is so important, and this was said by Steve Jobs, who we all know died not too long ago from pancreatic cancer. He said, don't let the noise of others opinions drown out your own inner voice boy I just want to say amen to that because that's how I wound up doing the work that I'm doing right now my inner voice would not leave me alone and I had this premonition in my second week of widowhood where my body jolted forward and I heard my own voice say with urgency I have to help the widows and I talked to myself for five minutes why am I worried about the widows I don't know which end is up. I don't know where I am financially. I'm in the middle of producing a television show. What killed my husband? I, there were so many things happening, but the voice was constantly there. 
And once I accepted, okay, that voice is so loud, I can't ignore it, and I started pursuing what the voice was telling me, I've never felt happier, and it's the most beautiful, beautiful journey that continues to develop, and um, I have no idea where it's all leading, but I know it is fabulous. So we all need to listen to the inner voice. Don't talk yourself out of it. When you hear something, stop and talk back to it. What are you saying to me? What, what am I supposed to be doing here? Because that will help you find your path. The next thing is, is to find your passion. And a lot of people, when I say that with speaking gigs, they'll say, well, I don't really know what my passion is. And the best way to find it is to think of things that you've been able to do in the past that you could do for hours and you were shocked because you didn't know the time had passed. It could be dancing, it could be music, it could be gardening, sports. There are a million things that we do and you think, I've been here like for five hours but it doesn't feel like it. Those are the things that you're passionate about. And then you can start from there and figure out what hobbies or what jobs you might be able to do in that particular category. And if you write things down on paper, it makes it even better. It makes it even, even, even better. So, being proactive, you got to take action. You can have the best ideas all day long, but if you don't put them into action, they're just a bunch of great ideas in your head, and who wants that? You know, that's not good. Uh, that doesn't work at all. So be proactive. Once you start to zero in, what's your passion? What kind of things can I do to exercise my passion? Then take action. And if you say, you know, I can dance for 100 hours, well, then start checking out some dance classes. And if you think, I'm just happy when I'm around dancers, well, then go work in a dance studio. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just, once you get your train of thought going, then every little step will follow and write stuff down because sometimes things are not as clear as others and you can go back and you'll go, oh, I forgot I said that. That's like amazing. Okay, now, uh, and I see Sandy says God helps. Absolutely, that helps. Uh, Sandy taught religion to high school kids and then volunteered for Life Team. And absolutely, and she gives talks. I know you give great talks. You're very good at that to teens at retreats and they fuel my passion. And that's funny you said that, Sandy, because I say that all the time. My passion is to help the widowed and the grieving, and the comments that I receive from all of you guys, that is what fuels me, because working 12-hour days is hard. I have so much responsibility, and I am a one-girl show. I'm hoping that that will change at some point. I really, really need some help, because things have gotten so much bigger than me, and um, that's what's so great though to think I could sit there and work for 17 hours yesterday was so beautiful but it's because it is my passion that's so great and we absolutely need to find purpose we all have different talents and gifts so to find the purpose for that is the most wonderfully rewarding thing in the world now the next thing is to think about what you want first don't worry about how you're going to achieve it because the how part will come to you if you just start to think what do I really want because we let other people influence us and sometimes we'll throw something out there and we'll say you know I just really love gardening I, I want to do that more and they go well that doesn't pay very well and they immediately start speaking in a negative form forget about it you know don't even entertain the conversation do what you feel is in your heart because you will make the right decision. And then once you figure out what it is that you want to do, then you start to figure out how. How much money does it take? How far do I have to drive? How much time do I have to put into it every week? And then once it starts to develop and you get on a roll, it feels great and it's so exhilarating. It's like a snowball going downhill. You know, it's so beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, I see you guys are talking about some dating in there. Okay. Okay. Oh, Melanie's husband had cancer in the lung, liver, kidney, and a brain infection. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. That's so much to deal with, isn't it? 
goodness, I'm really sorry about that, honey. And you know, and there are a lot of people who um, are watching the show tonight who have walked that terrible, terrible journey, and it's hard to come out from under that, but that's what we're doing. We're turning our lemons into lemonade right here on Reverend Craig Live. I love you guys so much, and and oh, I know, and after the diagnosis, that's the hardest part. It's a gift. It's a double-edged sword. My husband died suddenly and unexpectedly. I didn't get to say bye. I didn't get to put affairs in order. I didn't get to ask where things were located. I didn't get to say, how on earth do you take care of the pool? So that was hard. When you get the diagnosis, at least you're able to verbalize what people meant to you and you can figure things out. But to watch someone suffer and to have their body deteriorate, oh my goodness, that is so, 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 so hard. Goodness gracious, that's so hard. Wow. Okay, now the next thing is to live consciously every single day. And that can be hard to do because life sidetracks us and people sidetrack us and we open the mail you get a sack full of bills and all of a sudden you're sidetracked but if you live your life consciously every single day and you make decisions on what you should do and you set yourself up on some sort of a schedule you will definitely get a whole lot more things accomplished don't let fear stop the action why are we so fearful we are just fearful of so many things. We are afraid of the fear of success. We are afraid of failing, the fear of failure. We're afraid of what other people are going to say. We just have so many fears, but we can't let that stop us because if we were going to die and we looked back and we said, you know, I never accomplished much, but boy, I tried everything. You can feel happy about that, but I don't think you can feel happy when you're able to say, I had a lot of potential, I had a lot of talent, I had a lot of ideas, but I sat on them. None of us want to be in that boat, so we just have to work to put our ideas into motion and to live consciously every, every single day. The next thing we have to do is create opportunities. Opportunities don't just come. You know, I have a friend who really believes in the law of attraction, and I do believe that there is some merit in the law of attraction. But I don't think that you can stay home and not take action and have people just show up at your door and say, I've got the greatest job for you, and it's got a huge salary attached to it. I don't think that's going to happen. I think you have to put the wheels into motion. And once you do that, then I think you start to attract people. And I had a wonderful conversation today with a widow over the phone, and we were talking about this very thing, about how we have to be proactive and we have to take action. And she reminded me of the verse, Matthew 7, verse 7, that says, Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. And what does that imply? that we have to take action and it's not going to happen if we don't so just remember every day when you figure out what you want to figure out what the next step is and even if you make just a tiny bit of headway every day you're going to feel so much better and every day you'll start to see your little mountain getting bigger and bigger and bigger I think about ants and I look about how tiny they are and I think look at this gigantic ant bed but one grain of sand at a time, and next thing you know, you've got a nice little mountain. It's so beautiful. Now, the next thing is to avoid complaining, and that can be hard. You don't feel well. People do bad things to you. People are mean and hateful. It's hard not to complain, but in the end, complaining really doesn't get us anywhere. And frankly, when we complain, it makes us relive a situation that might have been negative, and it brings us down. Not only does it bring down others around us, but it brings us down. So there's a difference between sharing a story, because bad things happen, and it's, of course it's perfectly fine to talk about it, but there's a difference between that and saying, oh, this happened, that happened, this sucks, and just complaining. But, you know, your cup's either half full or it's half empty. And it's the same half cup of liquid, whichever way you slice it, 
but it's your attitude behind it. So having a great attitude will also help promote getting to your goals and living life to the absolute fullest. Okay, I see Sandy says, I don't think the blame game, the complain game opens us up. Yeah, it's this, you know, uh, well, let me see what she's saying here. Okay, Sandy says she couldn't focus the first year. She put things in the cabinet that belonged in the fridge and vice versa. And isn't that the truth? And we all do that because our brains are in another place and we work hard at functioning, but we can't function. You know, we're so off. Grief is such a devastating thing for the mind and the body. And when we cry, that hardest cry from the bottom of our stomach for it seems like two hours, we are exhausted and you can't function normally when you're doing that and that's what brief, grief brings to us. All right, the next thing is avoid putting your life on hold. Uh, so many people are guilty of this one. Uh, I know people who say they'll take action when their kids get out of school. They'll take action when they start making more money and they can afford to. They'll take action when they retire. And I look back at a lot of these people and I think, honey, your kids are out of school. You're making more money. Then you've retired and you're still not doing anything. You know, but I think the fear is what holds us back so often and we have to be able to take that step and just say whether I am successful, whether I fail, whether I like it, whether I decide it's not for me, just take the steps, take the action. Okay. Okay, Sherry says I learned that if you can't have a good attitude, fake it till you make it and it really does bring you back and I'm a huge advocate of that. Fake it until you make it. And even if you say, I don't feel good today and I'm not happy, but I'm going to act like I am, after a while you really can make yourself feel that way. The same thing is if you're having a good day and somebody says something off color, if you allow yourself to dwell on that and you make yourself madder and madder, the other person's gone and you're the one that's sitting there in the bad mood. So your mind controls your body. And if you are trying to do something, if, you, if your brain says, okay, I'm doing this today in the affirmative, not like I'm going to try or I'm thinking about, that's not going to get you there. But if you say, I'm doing this today, no one's going to stop me, you'll wind up doing it. It's amazing at how powerful the brain is. And when it decides something, the body definitely follows. Yes. That's so great. Oh, and there's Nita. Honey, I am so glad you're here. Nita goes to church services on Tuesday, and I saw her Facebook message a little bit later that she wasn't feeling well. I'm sorry you're not feeling well, but it's wonderful that if you weren't feeling well and stayed home that you were able to join us. So welcome. I'm excited. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. Sandy says that she gave up walking with neighbors that she used to love. And it was because they wanted to know what she was going to do with the house, etc., etc. Now, isn't that sad? That is just so sad. Why do people do that? You know, why? it's nobody's business, but yet people want to know, are you going to be able to stay in that house? And how are you going to ever take care of that big dog? And are you going to have to sell your jewelry to make ends meet? I mean, people are just rude and crude. But, you know, it's okay to say, you know what, let's talk about something else. It's okay to guide people. And when we're newer into this widow thing, it's harder to say what we're thinking because we're so injured and we're so damaged and we don't want to confront anybody. But over time, as you get stronger, you learn that you're able to say, you know what, I don't want to talk about that topic. And it's perfectly fine to do that. So, well, I hope you get you another little walking buddy, Sandy, you know, or, or maybe you can get the same ones, but just make the guidelines. I'm not talking about all that craziness. And Diane, I see that you're here and that you're new at this. Wow. And Terry, I didn't realize you were at five months either. That's amazing. A lot of people are new. That's just like crazy. 
And Donita, my goodness, you guys are just touching my heart. It's a beautiful thing that so many people are joining, and I'm enjoying your comments so much. But we're talking tonight on Robin Craig Live about living life to the fullest. And it's a hard order when you're sad and you're grieving and your life is upset. But there are so many things that you can do to promote that and to put that into action. Another one is to set goals with deadlines. You can set goals. And you can say, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. And you may fully believe that you're going to climb that mountain. But if you don't pick a date, and if you don't say, I have to do it by the end of the summer, then you may think about it for the next however many years. And none of us knows what the future holds for us. And you may put something off only to find that maybe you get a medical diagnosis or you get injured. Something happens to where you're not able to do what you want to do anymore. And that sucks. So you have to do everything that you can do today and don't procrastinate. If you have something on your mind, you know, we've seen the movie The Bucket List and people talk about that a lot. I, I never really thought of it as having a bucket list. But whatever your method is for thinking about it, if you have things that you know you want to do, there's no better time to start than today because as life changes you may have someone become sick in your family and you're you become the sole caretaker and maybe you still have the desire and the energy and the physical health to accomplish your goals but now you can't because you're taking care of somebody you know what I'm saying so just whatever it is that you feel you need to do don't procrastinate and then let go of the unhappy past that's a t that's a hard one but that's something that all of us who are widowed have to do. You know, we have to realize that the past is the past and we can't rewrite it. No matter how much we want to, we cannot rewrite the past. And, you know, I'm so touched. So many people reach out to me and I just sometimes cry because they've experienced so much trauma in their lives, you know, things that are, are very tragic, you know, incest and uh, being raped witnessing a murder, being abused, so many terrible things that people go through. And of course it affects you. Of course it does. But at some point, you know, you have to seek help and make a conscious decision to say, I'm not going to let my past rule my future. Because a lot of people live their whole lives that way and they spend their entire lives being unhappy because of things that happened to them in the past. And I always think about Oprah and she's a shining example of being abused as a child, sexually molested. And to still say, I'm not going to let that ruin my life and look at all the greatness that she has found in her life because she didn't let that stop her. And all of us have had different things that have affected us and, and made us who we are today. And some of the things are not happy and some of them are unpleasant, but we have to make a conscious decision. You know what? That was yesterday and I'm going to let that go because however much time I got left, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to make something great happen here. It's so beautiful when we're able to do that. Nyla had said, yes, I will not let grief rob me of the rest of my life that God granted me. And isn't that well said? That is so well said because, yes, we can, we can let our past rob us of our future. And we can let losing our spouse, which is so traumatic, we can let that ruin the rest of our lives. We can say life is not worth living and everything that I wanted is gone. But in the end, that's not the right way for us to look at it. Because we are here for a purpose and we have to seek that purpose and move forward in the best positive way that we possibly can. Now, one step toward that is to only be around people who are positive, who motivate you. Because people can bring you down. Oh my gosh, people can do such terrible things. And you can be in a good mood and they can say a couple of things and they can push your buttons. And all of a sudden you're just like, man, my day is ruined. So it's like, get rid of those people. And you know, Melanie, I think about you and I think about the conversation we have and, and you're dealing with a situation right now with someone who has taken things from you and denied it. And now you know that that's happened and that's a real downer. And especially because the girl called you mom and maybe that was her tactic. She wanted to make you feel like you had a 
family relationship and that you were like a mother to her. And no one wants to cast out a child. But in reality, this girl isn't your daughter and she has done bad things to you and she has stolen from you and now you have found out. So you have to eliminate that because life is hard enough. I say all the time, there are so many things that happen in life that we cannot control. Illness and death are two of those. Accidents. There are so many things. We can't control that. We can't control natural disasters. But we can control the people who we allow into our lives. And when we fill that space with people who are happy and who are motivating and they encourage us to spread our wings and fly, we're going to fly a lot higher. Drinking that good, happy crystal light. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Oh, wow. Terry, who is a widow, is saying that he used to come home and his wife Melody would say, you know what Oprah said today? And I know a lot of us have done that. I know I did that with my husband and I'm still doing it because she is such a positive, uh, inspirational person and she's overcome her hardships and she gives back and helps so many people. And there are a lot of things that we all have learned from her that we want to share with others. So that's so sweet and cute that she said that. And yes, Melody, absolutely. You know, because I mean, we've all had people like that. Um, and it's funny because I had a girlfriend that lived two doors down from me before I got married. And she and my sister and I used to always hang around and have fun. And then a terrible situation happened where I had to accept, you know what, she's not right. She's just not right. And I, I completely cut her off. Now you have to know somebody's not right before you totally cut them off because sometimes we make snap decisions and sometimes we don't see things clearly. But in Melanie's case where someone took from her and she found the stuff that the girl had taken, I mean that's kind of like a, a no-brainer right there. This girl is not right. She's totally taken advantage of me and I have no choice but to cut her off. Change the locks on your house and when she calls just say don't don't call me again. It's a hard blow but it's a harder blow to have someone come in your home and invade your privacy and steal from you. That sucks, you know. I'm so sorry that that happened. And it happened to Sherry too. Sherry said that her husband's wedding ring was stolen. And uh, even though she got it back, she knows who did it. And that's, that's unnecessary burdens for us to have to deal with. Okay. Okay. You guys are talking up a storm. You crack me up because when I look at the chat room, it's just going zip, zip, zip. You know, 50 lines of text just dashing by. But I love it, and that's what's so cool about watching the show is that you can make friends in the chat room. And even if you're not in the mood to do it, you can still feel like you're part of it because you can see the chat, which is something that you miss when you watch the archive shows. All the shows are archived, so you don't have to worry about missing them. But you do miss the chat, which is such a special, special thing. So, um... Okay, I'm getting a little note here. Hang on. Let me see. I'm getting your message. Okay, I hope that you've taken care of that. This is so great because people send me personal messages all throughout the show. It's such a beautiful, wonderful, wonderful place to be. <laughs> I, know, I know you guys try to make me lose my train of thought. That's kind of hard to do. But I like to bring you guys into the show because you have such fabulous comments. And it's like we're having a party from around the nation. You know, I mean, all of you guys are in different states. And sometimes we have viewers that are here from Canada. And uh, I know some of the other countries, the time is off. There was a young lady in uh, England and she wanted to watch the show but we figured out it was 3 a.m. in her neck of the woods so she can only watch if she gets insomnia. Isn't that funny? <laughs> uh, I know I am a multitasker and I'm trained to do it. You guys know that I am a three-time Emmy winning TV producer and when I say multitasking it's just like how many things can I have in my brain and not just uh, you know just short circuit and just like pass out with smoke coming out of the top of my head but it comes in really handy for the stuff that I'm doing now because I'm doing so many things at once and it's fun and it is a huge challenge I love it okay now some more tips are to help others in need and that's something that's been beautiful for me if you just help someone else 
you will find that you feel better no matter how rough your situation is. If you do a kind deed for somebody else, you just feel better. So look outside of your situation and help others. Now I have some more tips, but I'm going to scoot on to something because I felt that this fell really uh, beautifully with the topic tonight. It was an article that I read that was written by a nurse named Bronnie Ware and she worked in palliative care and dealt with people who were dying and she came up with five regrets that most people make on their deathbed so as we're talking about creating our best life we want to have that best life so when we're on our deathbed we're not saying the things that everybody has told her the first one is she said that um, this was the most common regret of all I wish I had had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. She went on to say, when people realize that their life is almost over and look back clearly on it, it's easy to see how many dreams have gone unfulfilled. Most people had not honored even half of their dreams and had to die knowing that it was due to either choices they had made or not made. Sometimes not making a choice really is a choice and sometimes you put things off but you're really making a choice that you're not going to accomplish your dreams she said it was very important to try and honor at least some of your dreams along the way from the moment you lose your health it's too late health brings a freedom that very few realize until they no longer have it so some of you may be watching and maybe you don't feel your best but you doesn't mean your life's over there's still lots and lots of things you can do you may have to alter some of your dreams but the important message is to live the life that is true to you and not to everybody else the second one is I wish I didn't work so hard I know a lot of people who say that one it came from every single male patient that she nursed she said they miss their children's youth and their partner's companionship, but at the same time, women also spoke of this regret. Uh, she went on to explain that a lot of the women who were dying were older, and they came from the generation where women stayed home and they took care of their kids, so they didn't really have that regret. But it's something that people in today's world really have to think about because most women like to work, want to work, and need to work. But you don't want to be on your deathbed and look back and just say, well, I was a good worker. You know what I'm saying? That's not, that's not fulfilling in your life. You have to work to make your living, but it's not fulfilling. By simplifying your lifestyle and making conscious choices along the way, it is possible to not need the income that you think you do. And by creating more space in your life, you become happier and more open to new opportunities once more suited to your new lifestyle. So don't be afraid to make those changes. You know, you know if you're happy and you know if you're not. You know if you're saying right now, yeah, she's talking to me, man, I'm working around the clock. Well then take a look at it and figure out what you can do and make those changes. Live life to the fullest. That's what we're talking about on Robin Craig Live tonight. The third thing is on the deathbed, people said, I wish I had had the courage to express my feelings. Oh, that's a huge one, isn't it? That is a huge one. We so often stifle ourselves. We think people are not going to accept us and they're going to be critical and so forth. But when you hear from this nurse who dealt with people who were in the last three to maybe six weeks of their lives, you do not want to be on your deathbed saying, I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. Express them. No matter if it feels strange, it's like everything. When you start doing it, it becomes normal. Over a period of time, you start to feel really good about it. She said that a lot of people expressed that suppressing their feelings was really about keeping the peace with others. But as a result, they settled for a mediocre existence and never became who they were truly capable of being. Many even developed illnesses relating to the bitterness and resentment they carried. And that's something that we all have to think about when we've had loss. We can become bitter. We can say, who cares? Life sucks, whatever. It's not worth it anymore. 
But at the end of the day, we don't want to be bitter because we held in our feelings. And sometimes I think guys are worse. Women usually have a little bit better chance of being more vocal. But in the end, we all have to be vocal, express your feelings. So what if everybody doesn't like it? We can't please everybody anyway. That's the thing we have to realize. We can't please people. Okay, I'm checking in the chat room, see what you guys are talking about. Oh, Diane, I'm sorry, honey. She says that her husband had brain cancer, so he really wasn't able to say a lot because of his memory. Oh, and Sandy says that she thinks suppressing feelings is extremely harsh on the body and mind. I totally agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. Oh, gosh, this is, oh, and there's Cheryl. Hey, KC, how are you doing? So glad you could join us, honey. Um, we're, we've been talking about living life to the fullest, and now we're talking about things that people shared with a nurse who worked in palliative care when people were on their deathbed and all of their regrets, the things that they really wish that they could change. And, of course, it's too late when you get to that point. Um, the last one was, they, they wish they had had the courage to express their feelings. Uh, this nurse says, we cannot control the reactions of others. However, although people may initially react when you change the way you're speaking by speaking honestly, in the end, it raises the relationship to a whole new and healthier level. And I want to say amen to that. And then she says, either that or it releases the unhealthy relationship from your life. But either way, you win. Isn't that so beautiful? When you reach a point where you are speaking your feelings, then if the other person can't accept it or deal with it, the relationship goes away, and that's what needed to happen. If the person that you're dealing with can handle it, then your relationship elevates to a new wonderful level. That is so fabulous. I absolutely love that. The fourth one is, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. And you know what's funny? I wished that when I became widowed. I thought, you know what? My husband has been my entire life for 21 years. And even though I had friends and I knew that they were scattered around, I didn't have that that close-knit friendship where it was a friend that knew exactly how I felt and was there for me. And I thought, you know, that's my fault. And now people are saying that when they're on their deathbed, they're saying that the friendships were important, but we don't keep in touch. We let life get in the way. So the nurse says, often they would not truly realize the full benefits of old friends until their dying weeks. And it was not always possible to track them down. Some people want to reach out, but it's too late. I know that, you know, I had a period where I wanted uh, in my widowhood to connect with people. And my first roommate, she was a cheerleader in high school. People thought we were sisters. We had the same hair. <coughs> Excuse me. And she was gone. Someone had told me that she died of cancer. And I was like, You've got to be kidding me. I felt so badly that I wasn't there for her and that we never had that opportunity to laugh and scream and talk about all the fun and how we used to go out dancing and oh it was just it was heartbreaking for me. So we want to reach out to our friends. The the people who were on their deathbed said that many had become so caught up in their own lives that they had let golden friendships slip by over the years. There were so many deep regrets about not giving friendships the time and effort they deserved. Everybody missed their friends when they're dying. but And it's a common thing because we're all busy. You know, there was only so many hours in the day. But in the end, even if we just pick one day a year and say, I'm going to look for my friends and tell them that I'm thinking about them, it's super important. Um, she said that people do not... Uh, people do want to get their financial affairs in order if possible when they're dying, but it's really not the money or status that holds the true importance for them. They want to get things in order more for the benefit of those they love. And, of course, nobody wants to leave their heirs holding the bag, and, and so often that's what happens. But when you're dying, sometimes you don't even have the energy to do that. But what she's saying is, that the money and who's going to get what, that those things are not important. It's the friendships. And she says that, you know, a lot of people are just way too ill and way too weary to deal with everything. But in the end, it comes down to love and relationships. 
The last one that she says that people always came up with is, I wish that I had let myself be happier. Isn't that something? You know, we all think, you know, we all want to be happy. And sometimes it just seems like we strive for happiness. But what she's saying is that a lot of people, when they're dying, that they realize that they really weren't happy. They lived their lives for others. She said that this was surprisingly common for her, that many did not realize until the end that happiness is a choice. They had stayed stuck in old patterns and old habits. The so-called comfort of familiarity overflowed into their emotions as well as their physical lives. Fear of change had them pretending to others and to themselves that they were content. Isn't that sad? Fear of change. You, you think, oh, you know, I'm not so happy in this, but you don't really want to change because it may be worse. So you just say, oh, I'm happy enough. But when you're on your deathbed, that's when you really are honest with everything. And none of us wants to say, I was not happy. It is a conscious choice. We choose happiness and then we work to find what makes us happy and we're strong enough to follow through with those steps. When deep within, the people on their deathbed longed to laugh properly and to have silliness in their life again. When you are on your deathbed, what others think of you is a long way from your mind. How wonderful to be able to let go and smile again long before you are dying. Wow, that, uh, that really is so impactful to me because when you're on your deathbed, you know, you can make peace with yourself and, and you can analyze everything, but it's too late to change anything. And we just have to be able to look at our lives now and say, what do I want? Where does happiness lie for me? And understand that living by other people's standards of what should make you happy, that doesn't cut it. Yes, Melanie is saying that's very deep. And isn't it though? Isn't that deep? Now, you know, Steve Jobs, who I quoted a while ago, of course, he's deceased, but his words of wisdom were, your time is limited. Don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is the result of other people's thinking. Most importantly, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. And that's why I was saying a while ago, your intuition and your heart, they know what you are supposed to be. But it's the brain. It's that inner voice. It's the fear that holds us back from becoming what we're meant to be. Steve says, after he says that somehow your heart um, and your intuition already know what you truly want to become, he goes, everything else is secondary. Aren't those wise wisdom, words of wisdom? Steve Jobs, co-founder of Apple Inc. So we just want to live life to the fullest every day. Don't let people rain on your parade. Always have the courage to speak up for yourself and understand that you will feel better even if people are mean to you or even if they're angry or even if they say, I don't want to be your friend. Because guess what? They're not your friend anyhow. You know what I'm saying? So in order with keeping life being great and fun and living it to the fullest, I think that we need to take a Benito's break. I now am going to give away one case of these great chips. This is like a gigantic bag. They say it's got six servings. Hmm. I know Nyla said the other day she almost ate the whole bag. Yeah, me too. They're just so good. It's hard to stop eating them. And I'm going to send you a case of these. There are nine of these gigantic bags in a case. And my favorite are the black bean chipotle barbecue. So everybody in the chat room who would like to win these, they're so good, um, write a number between, let's say, 1 and 50. Write a number between 1 and 50. I don't have my green cards today, but I just wrote down my number. So don't worry that I'm going to cheat. Just pick a number between 1 and 50. And the one who is the closest to the number I've written down, you're going to win. 
It's going to be so good. Okay, I'm monitoring the numbers. All right. I know, and Frida, by the way, I sent out an email for yours the other day, so thank you for alerting me, and so if there are any winners and you don't win after a little bit, well, contact me and let me check on that, and I'll, I'll get back with you on that. Okay, has everybody got a number? Has everybody got a number? <laughs> I think that's so cute. We have someone in the chat room, and their username is shop till you drop. Love it. <laughs> Okay, does everybody have a number? I'm still looking. I see the number that appears to be the winner. Hang on, I'm checking again. A number between 1 and 50. Okay, I know shop till you drop, that's really cute. Okay, guys, and, and Terry, you're hilarious. Between 1 and 50. Okay, it looks like we have our number, and it looks like our winner is, uh, I don't have your last name. Let me go back. You guys are going so fast. I, oh, my gosh, there goes the phone again. Tonight is hilarious night. Diane France Goodman, you just won, honey. The number was 38. I thought for a minute Julia was going to win because she picked 39. So, Diane, you have actually won, and I am going to send you a little personal message box so that you can give me your address. And, um, okay, here we go. Okay, just type your address in there, and then I'm going to make sure that we send you out. Um, a case of those. Isn't that fun and exciting? I absolutely love this. It's so exciting that you won on your first time. So many people have won and everybody else will win. Yes, Jane, they are in the market. You can buy them at places like Whole Foods, Central Market, some health food stores, and uh, I don't know, I know stores are different around the nation, but in my area, some Kroger stores, some HEB stores, some Randall stores, and a couple of people have notified me and said that they found them at health food stores. And if you don't find them, go to Bean Eatos. It's B E A N I T O S, beanitos.com. And you can also order them and you will love them. They are just so good. I'm hooked on them. So I'm going to write down Diane's note, and oh, and I see we have somebody else in there, Steve, Steve R. Dykos. So glad that you're here. You're a new person, too. I'm, I'm loving this. So many wonderful new people, and we're just here. We're just having fun. We're just working at doing the best we can playing the cards that we've been dealt and creating the best life that we can and supporting one another through our grief and um, this this crazy journey of being widowed and suffering a loss and not everybody's a widow the majority are but even if you've lost a loved one you will still benefit from watching the show so okay so you're in South Carolina Diane that's excellent we have got the map covered here in the chat room Okay. All right. I think I got it down. <laughs> oh, you guys are cracking me up here. It's too fun. And thank you for complimenting my shirt, Beyonce's line. It's really fun because it's got sleeves, but it's got the little slits in the sleeve, and it's got little sparkles, even though they're not showing up on camera very well. It's too fun. So, all right. So, I've got the address down. And don't forget next week, everybody has got to come next week because of the Valentine's party. We are going to whip it up here on the show, and we are having our own personal Valentine's Day party. And I'm going to be giving away books and Starbucks cards and a manicure and for a lucky widower, a haircut and a shave. That's from Nyla. I absolutely love that. I'll be giving away a Hope Matters t-shirt from Soaring Spirits. And there are people who haven't decided what they want to give yet, but we're just going to have a party. And it's not going to be anything too scary. You know, I'm not going to 
well, I don't know, I might dance, who knows, but it'll be fun, and we're going to get through Valentine's Day together, and we're going to support one another, and we're basically finding new ways to celebrate, because the old ways that we celebrated are gone, and we can't make the days go away, and it's really kind of sad when you try to make the days go away, so join me next week, and every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Pacific, and I'm going to stay in the chat room, and we're going to chat like we do every single week and catch up a little bit. So thank you for joining me. Please share this information with your friends, and let's keep the dialogue going. Have a great evening.